We are live. All right. So for those who are watching, we take, just did, oh yeah, go, 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 yeah, yeah, take two. So we, <laughs> we just did a live stream and the mic wasn't working. So hello, hello. No, no, it seems to be working. Hopefully people can hear us. And now no one's here. It's just us. Hello, darkness, my old friend. And because you did it private too. No, no, it should be public. Didn't you change that? There we go, oh. working. Hey. We got the sound back. Excellent. We got it. We, we got it. So, yeah, we'll give you guys a couple minutes to give a chance for others to join in. And basically, we just wanted to make this live stream and, you know, celebrate our engagement. Yeah. It's about time. You know, we've been going out for like nine years. Nine years. And talk about what you guys want to talk about, you know? Oi, hey, so nice. What's going on, Jordan? Philip? Bresca Lo Frio? Bresca Lo Frio? Loved her since your mushroom trip stories. You're both so lucky. <laughs> oh, no, honey. Congrats to both of you. Thanks, thanks, guys. Appreciate the love. Yeah, nine years is a long time. Very long time. Yeah, where well, you're getting antsy. Is this guy going to propose? Not really, but it's funny because a lot of people kept asking me um, if I would break up with you if you didn't propose. And I always thought that that was a ridiculous question. I'm like, what do you mean? Like, yes, of course, it would be great and beautiful for him to propose, but I'm not going to leave him if he doesn't want to. Like, I understand. It's a lot of pressure. It's a big deal. Like, getting married isn't just, you know, like getting a ring and becoming um, a title of husband and wife. It's it's more than that. It's a partnership. It's something you should take a serious consideration um, because that's something for life. So I completely understood that it was a big deal uh, and like mm. something very nerve-wracking to ask. So I was always like, of course I wouldn't break up with him. But well, yeah. yeah, it's a ceremony that is literally about becoming one flesh mm -hmm. right you're, you're you're signing this contract that like all right we're in it for life there, there's a reason why there's so many divorces these days because most people don't actually realize the power of marriage and like yeah. what they're actually do it just because yeah. I mean, how many people do you know who's engaged to their partner after like six months of knowing them i'm like yeah you're insane yeah I mean, you got to go through the warranty period first. Yeah, that's again, why I waited nine years. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> but then, no, I've known people that have known each other for very little time, got married, and they're absolutely happy. But I think it's different because they would have understood the concept of marriage getting into it. I think the issue is, like, you know, like a lot of people that get together in high school, um, they've been together for years, 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 and then uh they that like they have kids together and then they get married and that's where shit goes wrong because mm. stuff i don't know their perspective on marriage is different like i don't know well that again it's, it's for life you got to make sure that you choose the right gal or man partner <laughs> partner yeah. person <laughs> for, no for real because i think it's like to get divorced it's like that's like phew, that's a big deal it's a really big How many deal people... and you're literally you're breaking a contract with god like, you know what I mean? That's what, what marriage is about. I already anyway. know quite a few people that are very young, divorced with kids. And it's because, yeah, when you're when you're young, if I was able to get married at a young age, I'd probably already be divorced three times. Yep. Because you don't understand the seriousness of it. You just think, oh, yeah, getting married, husband, wife. It's like, no, <laughs> there's a lot more to it. Yeah. So I decided to wait a very long time. Nine years. A very long time. <laughs> but my reaction. Just to be sure, you know, you want to make sure. <laughs> Do I really want to be with this person the rest of my life? My reaction my was life. like I was so overwhelmed I couldn't actually respond. I was just like, <laughs> <sighs> and then when I could speak, the first thing I said was, it's about freaking time. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I'm 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 content. Very content. Uh, I've been following you since I was a teenager. I'm 26 now. Oh, wow. Is that even That's possible? That's great. Yeah, you've 19, been doing... seven years ago. Really? Some... You've been YouTubing for a long time, baby. Oh, shit. I must be terrible at it if I'm... I feel like... Yeah. 
<laughs> doesn't matter <laughs> that my success hasn't like for me to be doing this for six seven years i think you're doing i feel like i well. should be a lot further along i think this past couple years have been a little bit more difficult but compared to where you started you're what do you mean doing like amazing covid and stuff mm. yeah it de- definitely put up a hurdle because a, a lot of my at least my, a lot of my content the last couple of years has been a lot about like traveling, going overseas, doing documentaries about different cultures and stuff like that. Mm. But it's still no excuse because you can always explore your own backyard. Not at the start because we went through like a really heavy lockdown, but now Australia is like, we're sweet. We're pretty much back to normal here. We get one case and everyone freaks out. <laughs> so it's pretty good. I don't know how things are going the rest of the world. I've been purposely staying ignorant on the news because, like, when I get really deep into it, I get really deep into it. I just wanted to. Now nah, you're doing great considering YouTube not liking your content. <laughs> yes. <sir. sighs> I guess. <laughs> You've been through some really challenging times. Ah, uh, like with the whole YouTube bullshit. Yeah. Yeah. So I think you've come a long way, baby. I'm very proud of you. Very, very Thank proud you. of you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah, we're all proud of Tom. <laughs> It's mushroom season in Tassie. Yeah, ¿Ustedes van a hablar español? Yes, we do. Sí, por supuesto. Obviamente. We just start speaking Spanish for, mm, for the rest <laughs> of the <laughs> That'd be so hard. Be so hard. Uh, I don't think I'm being hard on myself. I'm just being honest. No, he's hard on himself. He's very savage. <laughs> I have to be the one to come back in like, no, remind yourself. You're doing great. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I don't know, man. You're tackling a relative niche part of the internet and despite that you're doing so well there we go the see more. but i don't know i feel like if i purely focused on psychedelics my channel would grow much faster so like i, I really don't believe that youtube suppresses psychedelic content i feel like if anything they they promote it a lot but i it mean how, how, did, how else would like substance reach like past a million subscribers you know what i mean Mm. If YouTube was so suppressing on psychedelic content, then there's no way that guy would have made it that far. So I don't know. But I think he, he's been doing it for a really long time and he un- understands. We, we've and been doing it the same amount, but obviously when he started the channel, he knew what he was doing. Whereas yeah. when I started, I was just kind of yeah taking it video by video sort of that's thing. That's exactly what I mean. Like he's he was smarter. Experience. You're squeaking the chair. Oh, I'm, I'm, I just want to hold you. <laughs> but I reckon because when I started, it was more about like self development and exploring my spiritual path, yeah, sort of thing. And then psychedelics kind of came afterwards. Yeah, because you were using that as a tool for self development. Yes, so you, you started more about self development, and in that you incorporated some psychedelics, mm. and then from there you kind of went more into psychedelics than self development. Yes, Which and I've that's, that's when that, I developed the, the spiritual ego and yeah. you know, it didn't, really, didn't and, really help. And I have been saying that you should do more videos um, like back in the beginning where you just kind of sit in front of the camera and just talk about life and self-development and how far you've come and stuff because I think a lot of people would be interested. Mm. I don't know. What do you but think? I think with, with YouTube you've got to be like because the problem is when, once you commit to a certain niche, and then you start making other videos, the, the algorithm punishes you really badly. Like I could do like a video of me taking 50 tabs of acid straight up like that. I'd get like a million views. But then if I made a video on like self-development, something that has nothing to do with psychedelics, the views would tank because YouTube's like, oh, p- your subscribers don't really want to watch this. So that, that's how they, they kind of punish you for it. So if anything, I would get rewarded for making videos on psychedelics, even if it was like irresponsible videos of just me getting high or something but then if i was to make videos like actual legitimate like philosophical videos or about existentialism i feel like it still doesn't do hurt well. to do it though no it doesn't even if they're like side videos like it's yeah. okay for you to do I, that's, more psychedelic that's, that's, that's stuff but I, I think it's all right to do everyone that's why i did another another channel would i make a video on dxm no i'm just not into drugs to be honest like will you do ayahuasca about... again nope no what are you we've both decided yeah no. we're like nah. we've done <laughs> well, i only went for the one one time the one dude retreat. let her hold you <laughs> 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 I, he does it a lot I, it's me i'm very just 
I don't know, we 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 switch every now and then where we're just kind of like this, and then it's like, ah, get away from me. It's just yeah. So right. then we have those moments where we hold each other a lot. But um, yeah, ayahuasca. Um, we've both realized that we got what we needed out of it, mm -hmm. um, and it's it's not needed. It's not needed to go again or to go through what we went through. Yeah, I feel like it's one of those like. It kind of reminds me of the once you get the message, hang up the phone. And like, yeah, I know Dennis McKenna said it's not a phone, it's a it's communication. You can continuously learn. But in practicality and in reality, I feel like there's only a certain amount of times you can do psychedelics and actually get a lot of gains from it. Whereas if you keep doing it years and years and years down the track, I feel like you kind of lose the point and end up getting more more confused. You know what I mean? So it's just not We've learned as well that with um, ayahuasca, as as beautiful the ceremony is and, like, regardless of your intention, sometimes dark entities and other stuff will penetrate regardless of how protective they are trying to be. You've left a door open. So it's really kind of scary and it's really kind of dangerous to kind of play around with. Right, with portals. Because yes. that's the thing, even in the first Avengers, Hawkeye is like portals can be entered both ways, mm, right? Mm, exactly. Because I think a lot of young people have this arrogance of thinking that you go into the psychedelic space and you're the observer of this world without realizing that, yeah, that you're also giving access from that world to this world, right, into you. So there's always, yeah. But even then, it's not something that we would recommend <clears throat> for everyone to do. I was nah, kind nah. of... Uh, of course, yeah. I've just met people who've like it's really helped mm -hmm. like from a healing perspective the thing is i would never recommend ayahuasca or any psychedelic for spiritual growth i think it's a it's a bit of a trap but in terms of healing if you're in a certain place and you tried everything else yeah of course it can help right mm -hmm. it can be it can be a medicine because the reason that we went to it uh well that i went to it was because i was suffering from graves disease autoimmune an autoimmune dis um, disorder. disorder yeah which meant that I had to choose to either remove my thyroid or take a radioactive pill that would disintegrate my thyroid from the inside. <laughs> and the thyroid is this butterfly gland that's just here. And it controls pretty much everything in your body, your like um, metabolism, gland, yeah. your heart rate, hormones. Can you believe getting those two options? That's it. Oh, yeah. I remember being so furious. This is why I, I'm so angry at like the the mainstream medical community for like giving these like not you gotta either cut your thyroid out or take a it pill because, for the rest of your no, life. but it was because they were trying to find a solution they were no, trying, I, like in their perspective they were like okay how do we take out this completely i understand the perspective they, all i'm saying is it's wrong and dangerous. I know, I know. <laughs> um so i was put to a point where i was desperate but i actually don't think it was ayahuasca that helped heal that because i am i'm healed i'm good i'm healthy um, my levels are all back to normal. Yeah. I have to get checkups every now and then, but everything's Diet, good. Exercise. Yeah, my doctors said that. Um, and it's really impressed. irresponsible because I straight up said, don't listen to your doctor. Because I was considering <laughs> it. I was considering getting, getting my thyroid removed. But what I actually think that helped me was Cambo, the the frog, frog medicine. Oh, yeah. Mm. What was the solution to thyroid issue? Well, a lot of it was... Like diet, diet, exercise, exercise. Um, <sighs> so so revolutionary, right? I realize as well because um, your thyroid, if you go into like the chakras, the throat chakra is Bloody about hippie. communication. <laughs> yes, I know. I don't believe in chakras. Um, I don't believe in chakras. I don't believe in the power of belief. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. Yes, <Yeah>, um, <laughs> Doctor Strange. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, sadly, I have been through some traumatic stuff in my my youth that I felt that I couldn't communicate with anyone. And mm. what I think happened was that I was so bottled up with emotion that basically like a fizzy bottle, you know, they just kind of like shook the bottle and pop, everything started pouring out. And that's how what I think happened to my thyroid. It just kind of just overloaded and it needed a release. So I think, I don't know, um, finding some form of therapy for your mental health is really good, uh, learning to communicate because I went from 
not expressing myself to expressing myself too much. So I had mm, to learn to overload. kind of balance that. Yeah. Same with me, actually. Mm. Do you, Tom, do you plan on doing any more stuff with Jay Dyer? Uh, for sure, I would love to. Um, I've just been studying and because, like, when I interviewed Jay Dyer, he really made me realize how, let's say, how poor my philosophical framework actually was. You know what I mean? And so I had to, I feel like I needed to catch up a lot on legitimate philosophy and theology. And so that way, next time we come together, I can put a lot more on the table. But I kind of like that. I like interviewing people that kind of, in a way, makes me feel dumb. So it's like it forces you to. Yeah, to learn. To learn. I, I, I agree. I think that's good. I'm 15 thinking of doing acid. Should I not? No. No, definitely, definitely not. 100% You're much not. too young to be doing anything really. Because you want, I feel like a dad. No, <laughs> but still, it's no. Like, but if on. you want to enjoy it at its at most fullest, wait until you're at least in your mid to late twenties. You only get one first time. Remember that. And you want your brain, your body, everything to be prepared and ready so that you get the fullest experience that you can actually get without actually causing your body any harm. And yeah, you'd go for a much better experience. Well, it's not even your body because I, I I can hear already people like, oh, actually, LSD is physically safe and blah blah blah. Yeah, no, but when I say physically, I mean body, brain as well. Because you, your mindset at fifteen, I'm like, this may sound a little savage, but you don't know anything. Yeah, you don't know shit. You know nothing. No. And There's when no you fifteen get, year old who's <laughs> no. A lot and of when you get do, yeah. older, <laughs> you would have a more euphoric experience and, because you're just more developed, more understanding, and you're... And it will probably confuse yeah. you with life a lot more because the problem, well, a big problem about modern spirituality is that a lot of people think that direct experience equals truth. Like because you experience something with such an overwhelming confirmation that you're like, yeah, that must be true. But then hang on, Bob over there, just had the same drug and had a completely different experience, completely different message. So are you right and he's wrong? You know what I mean? That's yeah. the thing about direct experience. The mind can be very deceptive and you shouldn't base your entire model of truth based on just direct experience, right? It's not, it's not bueno. You should learn some logic, reason, mathematics, the nature of the universe. Have a bit of life experience as well, I feel just give the trip a, a better better experience. What do you mean? Because, like, Sorry. <laughs> imagine, I don't know, like you're painting a picture mm -hmm. and then halfway through the picture you're like, no, nah, this is good, this is done. But you, it's just because you don't know. But if you keep going and let that picture load and be in its full completion, you'd be able to appreciate it more. Mm. Does that make sense? Thoughts on Connor Murphy's bad ayahuasca psychosis? Well, there we go. There's a perfect example of how psychedelic can turn someone absolutely insane. And every week he has a different view. One week he was like, I'm a Muslim. I believe this. And the next week, oh, yeah, I'm an atheist. Oh, no, I don't believe in free will. Oh, yep, I'm God. You know what I mean? It's like too much back and forth because you're going by your direct experience, your sensory data, which can say. So. Shroom, chocolate, shroom chocolate bars are becoming popular. Ooh, oh. There you go. Well, well, well. I've gotten offered some many times. But I never liked the idea of mixing, like, chocolate and dairy with mushrooms. I feel like it messes with my stomach. Why? Because you don't like mushrooms? No. No, because of the chocolate, the dairy oh. chocolate. Usually when I when I have done mushrooms in the past, I take the diet beforehand very seriously. Oh, okay. Because I get, like, nauseous and stuff. Yep, you imagine yep, if you would eat, yep. a, eat a chocolate bar before shrooms. That's what uh, I liked about the ayahuasca retreat, the diet they make you do. I do. I like the last retreat I did because the first retreat I did, it was like pretty much all vegan, whereas at least the last retreat you could still eat fish and eggs and eating fish and eggs is a game changer. Mm. Makes me feel better. I'm not a fan of that. Kundalini. I, I think someone else have I done Kundalini yoga. I did it a few years ago. It's interesting, but I don't, I don't practice yoga anymore. Do you regret working with psych substance since he's basically advocating Mine minors taking life? Drugs on Listen, I, I don't regret anything in my life, not because everything I've done is right, but it also set me on this path and 
you know, help it helped my YouTube channel. I can't, I'm not gonna lie. And but yeah, no further comment. <laughs> vegan diet, what about <laughs> it? No, I'm not vegan anymore. How far from the future is she? Actually, this is apparently my first time on earth. I'm a baby soul. Appar you know apparently, what? according what? to who? <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry, I just <laughs> no, explain me, Yesenia. Well, ac according to the stars during my acid trip um, and my mushroom trip, I have been told multiple times that I am a baby soul. So it's funny because now I think about that the movie Soul, um, when the Pixar when, Soul, yeah, yeah. So I think I'm something like that where I've Lived a long time um, up in the stars, but as a child. And then I think all of a sudden I was just like, you know what? I want to check out this earth. And then came down here. See, complete baloney. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm sure it felt very real to I you. I mean, but like if you think about it, <laughs> sorry, no, so sorry. my star sign, <laughs> let's get into this. She, <clears throat> my star she's sign. She's a little bit more of a new is, ager. Shut up. My star sign is an Aries which is known as the ram, it's the firstborn, and it's also known as the baby for some reason. And every time I've tripped, and I've never made these connections before, but every time I've tripped, I always get that baby kind of sensation. Like, I'm, you know, I grab my feet, and I'm like, hee hee, ha ha, hee hee. I'm sure a lot of people do, but I don't know. And I was born Good Friday under the Star of David. That's pretty um, cool. Yeah. So Congratulations. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. That's what I think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what are we saying about Adam? Nothing. Someone just asked me if I regret working with him. And no, I don't at all. Hold on. Can you go there's into no, the dietary, no reason to. dietary changes uh, you made to fix the autoimmune condition, please? He said, yeah. Um, so I went on a super strict diet. I cut out gluten completely from my diet for at least a month. Now I'm... I'm still pretty much gluten-free, but I don't avoid it as much uh, because gluten apparently aggravates your thyroid. And I went vegan for a really long time, really, really long time. Uh, chicken and fish every now and then. But um, I have to basically force her to have animal products. Yeah. I, I was getting... Um, Which is funny because I was the one that basically... Know. <laughs> made you go into the vegan diet. I'm so sorry for making no, but that, that I needed that. I at the time it was something times. I needed to do to flush out whatever was going on in my system. Um, but I started getting a lot of wrist issues because I do massage as well. So it was starting to get a little bit difficult to do massage and Are you um, like even just weak, weak bones. And yeah, and even just going to the gym and lifting weights and stuff. It was getting really difficult. So I needed some form of protein. I'm still pretty much. You're, I would say you're, 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 there's no such thing as 80% vegan. Well, I don't vegan know. My not. diet is pretty much, whole I have. Food. Yeah, you, your whole food, you have a plant-based diet. Yeah, plant-based diet. You're mostly plants, yeah. Because yeah. I don't have dairy. I, I can't do dairy. It, just, it grosses me out. Since I was a kid, <laughs> I just can't do it. It's always made me gr like, ugh. Um, but we were vegan for a while. I don't know about vegan for like three years. And longer, then... I reckon. Yeah, I went into it very, very deep, and then I started eating like quality red meat again, and it just changed my life. And I literally haven't had depression or like severe anxiety since. Right, so I feel like my my mental health was declining yeah. from doing long term vegan. Yeah, yeah. no, I agree because you were getting very. And then I started looking soft. at the patterns of like a lot of. Apparently, this is very common. Like the the sunken eyes is very common. Oh my god, the weak teeth. I told the you about my friend. Pale skin, dude. I was, I was, I looked like a junkie. Dude. One of my friends told me that his friend was vegan. I think for like over ten years or something, and his nails fell out. His oh, nails fell out of the cuticle, I've heard and his like elbow this. popped out because he's just not getting the the right amount of nutrition. I don't know what he was doing that he wasn't supplying his body with the right amount of vitamins, um, protein, and everything, then his body was basically falling apart. That's terrifying. Absolutely. Veganism is a fast. Exactly, exactly. I, I just don't believe that you can have a long-term vegan diet. No. I mean, that doesn't mean that 
we completely agree that people should be eating meat like every day in large quantities because that's the issue is that we don't know self-control. We indulge way too much and we get carried away. It's okay to, like, I don't eat red meat. I can't do it. I can't. I'm trying to get her to get no, red meat I won't do one it. day. I can't. Some no. kangaroo, mate. It's good no. for you. It'll change your life. No, Trust me. I don't know. But it's gross in your mind, but once you no, eat it. No, it's not that it's gross. Gosh. It's something that's never felt right to me since I was a kid. Since I was a kid, I've never felt right we'll about it. We'll get it, guys. We'll get I it. I remember eating a goat in front of the goat, and I'm like, I'm so sorry. Oh my God. But in the goat's mind, he's like, Mm-hmm. No, the goat the goat just saw food and he was like, give to yeah, me. And I'm like, okay. I can't do that. <laughs> I can't give you, no. Yeah, someone was saying that uh, apparently animals suffer unimaginably worse than humans, which is funny because humans are the only beings on the planet that actually has the capacity to imagine. So if anything, yeah, we can imagine what it's like, what how animals would suffer. It's the other way around. Animals can't imagine human suffering. Mm, mm. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. Go vegan if you want to die. <laughs> no, I, and I was so deep into it, man. I believed it with I was debating people. I learned I watched all the, the famous documentaries, following all the the biggest vegan YouTubers, and man, I took it really to heart. But then you gotta go deeper within and look at how the scientific studies are made and look at the practical reality of long term. Mm, the lo- it's, it's the not, long it's term effects especially the, the mental health into. really freaked me out because i noticed that the longer like the all the activists you see them over a year and they get more bitter and angry and kind of yeah, it's such a, i'm i'm gonna say this in the nicest most loving way possible but you were becoming a bit of a pussy yeah i know <laughs> south park was right have you seen that south park episode when stan stops eating meat because you know he doesn't want to kill cows or whatever and he starts having these sores everywhere and they were like little pussies. Oh, yeah! <laughs> it's like, yeah, you're turning into a giant pussy. Uh, uh, no, nah, but it's true. I was getting my, my. I feel like my voice was getting a little bit more high-pitched. I was like super sensitive to the world. Ooh, I'm suffering. Ooh. And it's not, there's no way to live, man. We live in a savage reality. So you got to, you got to be a man. You got to man up, basically. I, I don't know about you guys. Like sexism these days, are just, it's just, it's gotten to a next level. But I like to be a woman's woman. Like, a, like I want to cook for my man. I want to, you know, make you know, That's just how I was raised, and I'm happy with that image. I'm. Happy. <laughs> but that means it's unstable. But that means I also perceive my man to be my man, and I, I, he's sensitive, yes. But I want to know that he's strong. I want to know that he's going to be there for me when exactly. I need him. Like, if someone like, breaks in the house, you want to know that I'm going. I can put on that psycho mode and you know what I mean? Instead of <laughs> nah. Yeah. Women get turned off that shit. I'm still I'm still strong they, in they, a woman, but like <laughs> they manipulate your emotions to feel empathy. Yeah. Well the whole at the end of the day, the whole vegan argument really falls on emotional appeal. It's that animals suffering equals bad, which isn't based on any like there's no real logical reason except for it just makes me feel bad. Therefore, it's wrong. But, yeah. Anyways, do you find language more limiting than you used to? Uh, no. Is that just because? I, I feel like you just got to learn the right language, I feel. No, but is that because people are so sensitive these days that you have to be careful with the words you use? Mm. Because even just now, Explain yourself. I was very, very cautious as to saying that I want my man to be a man. Because I know some people be like, uh, toxic masculinity. No, I'm not encouraging uh, yeah, toxic, toxic masculinity. There we yeah. go. <laughs> <laughs> what about toxic femininity? No one talks about that. No, which is ridiculous. Um, yeah. Strong woman. Woman. <laughs> Do you think the universe is contracting slowly back into another Big Bang and that's God is calling us to join him, that it's physics, but that we created a narrative around it? Love is tentacles. Uh, no, I think narrative and symbolism is the fundamental building blocks of reality, like before physical. Like even if, you know, if you're talking about God and the Bible, it says in the beginning, fuck, what was it? i got to learn scripture better. <laughs> but basically he spoke, you know, let there be light. So it was always a concept. And then he spoke into existence and that made reality. Anyways. I have an appointment scheduled with Golden Teachers this Saturday. <laughs> 
I think it's time for another trip to heal some wounds. I've turned into a bit of an alcoholic and been sober for a week now. Oh, good for you. Good, good, good. I know it's a hard struggle at the start, but what, you've got the ball rolling. There we so. go. What is grief if not love persevering? Wonder. Vision. Yeah. That's a good one. That is Dude, a good Vision one. has some nice bangers. Oh, that always broke my heart. I was like, oh, like her pain, that suffering. I couldn't imagine. By the way, Tom, can you say my name out li- loud for the lols? Mike Litoris. I didn't get it. Mike Litoris. My clit. Ah. <laughs> Thanks for that. <laughs> loud. <laughs> uh, do you guys, hang on. Uh, do you guys used to fight a lot? I wouldn't say a lot. We've gone through phases, of course, where we argue um, and we did a lot. We did a lot more. Um, like, even now, we, like, I guess you still do, but. You Why do you get, think you it's taken it. him so long to propose? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, because I, I had the ring for like four years. And there was four so, years! And there were so many times where I was like, I wanted to do it, but then we'd have a fight or something. I was like, yeah, you know what? I'm just going to propose to you, but now. <laughs> <laughs> Shouldn't have been mean. Could have been married by Bastard. now. Yeah, see? But regardless, like, I don't know. Some people say that if you fight in a relationship, um, that means you're not meant to be together. I don't really agree with that because you fight with everyone. You clash with everyone. Like how often do you fight with your sister? How often do you fight with your dad, your mom, your brother, your cousins? That's what family does. Yeah, exactly. The point of love is that to be put in that corner and to still push through, you know, to still – understand each other and kind of get to a point where it's like okay let's talk about this let's resolve this issue or let's figure it out otherwise I don't know if you choose not to be together then that says more about you than it does them what do you think the actual problem is with veganism you can just get as much protein on a vegan diet I'm not saying it's good or bad I just want to hear but you can't because the thing is with meat you've got exclusive nutrients that aren't available in plant food like um there's vitamin A, there's like the omegas. Like I'm not a nutritionist, but there is for sure a lot of nutrients that it is exclusively in animals. And then you could say like, oh, yeah, but what about supplements? What did we do mm-hmm. <laughs> for you know, thousands of years? So it just it doesn't make any sense. And it's the, the quantity of food that you have to eat as well. When you're in a vegan diet, you have to eat a lot more. And I feel like because with a vegan diet, you're always going to be contributing to the an- to the deaths of animals. Like if you eat soy or wheat or any grains or fruit, like, what do you think happens? I need to plow the land. Do you know how many rodents and little mice, birds, insects, you know how many of them die? A lot of them. So you're like, you're always going to be contributing to the death of animals, except that with veganism, it's it's this. Yeah, we're, we're doing it for the animals. Whereas when you're eating meat, it's like so obvious. Like, yeah, I'm eating a sentient animals. Thank you. You, you know, you give your thanks. You know what you're contributing to. And I feel like, let's say if you kill one kangaroo, how many people would that feed versus you know, grains. Mm, mm. So basically what you um, – so lo- yeah. You know how Grill do the the contributions to society and community? They do donations um, for local communities. One of the ones that they've got was something about kangaroo rescues. And I was going to do it and then I was like, wait a second, kangaroos are pests. We actually have too many of them right now. A lot of them. Yeah. We, I think it was because we got rid of the dingoes. But our, our mind is, oh, no, save the kangaroos. And it's like – no, mm. there, there's a lot of them. There's so many of them, in fact, that, well, yeah, they sell like, the Don't meat get me wrong. I'm not gonna, I'm not, I don't mean consciously go out and just, you know, kill the kangaroos. You don't need Obviously to. Obviously not. <laughs> yeah. But you don't need to go out of your way to protect them and save them. Does that make sense? Mm. That sounds really harsh. What the fuck does kangaroo taste like? I'm Canadian. Well, I haven't had elk, but apparently it tastes somewhat similar to that. Like game meat, basically. But I can't confirm. It's just I'm just going from what other people say. But it's pretty good. I like it. Very healthy for you. Good stuff. Good stuff. And there's just something about even even when I started eating meat again, I feel like it really contributed to my spirituality. Because again, spirit. If you think spirituality is all about dissolving your ego and going into the ether and being super sensitive of life that you can't even deal with evil and suffering, then it's not real spirituality. Bear with me one second. My brother's knocking on the door. He's never locked, knocked on the door till now. 
so. Yeah, anyways. I was not born not having meat in my life, and I haven't had meat my whole life. I'm 26. Ooh, that would be interesting. You should try some meat then. See how you go. Meat has hormones, synthetic hormones, trans fat, saturate, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, that's, you're talking about factory factory farms. Like, if, if you're talking about kangaroo meat, there's no, they don't put any hormones no, they don't in, put it. Anything in They're it. not feeding it soy or like, you know what I mean? So a lot, a lot of the arguments against meat is like the standard way that people eat meat, but that doesn't apply to us. Mm. That's why I'm getting a very. Um, I saw something good about a, someone asking about age gaps in relationships. That um, the sister, I think, is twenty one and the, dating a thirty three year old. I know this is a little off topic, but um, I don't see an issue with the age gap. Um, she's twenty one. She, oh, she no, should know what she's doing. Yeah, if but, it's if it's the man's older. Yeah, but if the woman's that much older. Then I feel like there's you more. Reckon? Yeah, I, feel like I don't more. know. I've seen older men date young. I mean, older women date young men. Yeah, and how's that go? I bet you subconsciously the the woman's going to treat him like a child. Unless, how can you treat? How can you? I just don't feel like you can. How can you date a boy? You don't and most treat him like women a man? do that? I do that with you as well sometimes. Where I feel like I have to be a little bit of a mum. I think that's pretty much most relationships. Yeah, a bit of a. Isn't that Freudian. a isn't that a, a thing though? I guess because like you kind of replace your mum with your wife. That's why you look for a good wife that does the stuff that your mum kind of used to do for you. Yeah, I, if you, I guess that's a more of a Freudian perspective, and there is some truth to that. I don't think it's the entire yeah. truth. But veganism is a materialist paradigm. Yeah, I'd, I'd say it's. I'd say most vegans are either New Age or atheist. And which are kind of two, almost two sides of the same coin in, in a sense. They both believe in relativism, mm. meaning that they don't believe that there is an absolute right and wrong. Mm. And most vegans are also totally for abortion, but then totally against. I think that's ridiculous. Eating eggs. No, it's just the consistency. So I don't, guys, I don't want to make this like a heated discussion. <laughs> it's more the consistency saying, no, oh, no, no, abortion's fine, but. Eating an egg makes you a murderer. Like you see the what? Mm -hmm. No logic. I agree about veganism. We tried it too, and it fucks you up, lol. We need to take better care of the animals, though. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. This 100%. is what I mean. Like it doesn't mean refuse... that you go overboard and start eating all the. Have animals I eaten factory farm meat? meat in the last few years? No. I would even rather fast buy... than eat factory. Even farm when meat. you buy kangaroo meat. Like you probably have like one piece in the week, and then that's it. We give, give the rest give, to the give animals. the rest of the animals. Yeah. yeah. And I, I don't eat that much meat, but I have to make sure that I eat meat. Yeah. I At least feel, once a I week or something. Good, I always feel good about myself and mm. long term. Mm. Except that this time I'm a conscious meat eater, meaning that before I was just eating whatever, any meat, factory farm meat, not even think about it. Whereas now it's like I'm very conscious that this was a sentient being that gave its life to give me nutrients. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, how many times have each of you done shrooms? Well, I guess less than ten times, probably. I think I've done it three, three times. I'd say the issue with meat eating is not the killing aspect; it is the suffering the animals. Mass farm, yeah, yeah. The factory farming—that's hard. We've we got to move that onto another discussion because that's yeah. that's not what we do. I don't eat factory. But farm you know, meat. we were even driving around because we live pretty close to the farm. Did you just say kangaroo meat? <laughs> yes, we did. Um, it's delicious, good for you, and it's good for the environment. Uh, what was I going to say? Yeah, so we live pretty close to the farm life where they do all the, like, it's a little sad seeing all the cows and the sheep, like, in the trucks and stuff. That's that's how close we live. Um, but if you actually go to the farms, they're in huge open places. They're in. Cows. Yeah. Like, it's actually Dude, really. Dude, I can take you guys for a walk. And see how happy and free the cows are. Like, they probably they're probably happier than most humans. Mm. You know what I mean? I mean, yeah, sure, they get killed at the end, but compared to being in the wild, dude, from getting eaten alive by the asshole up. My family uh, used to know. we used to clean for um, these butchers. Uh, the house was beautiful, big piece of land. And their cows were happy, and I never never saw them mistreat them. I never saw them give them like 
hormones and stuff. But I mean, I don't know. That's the extent that I saw. But yeah, we've just been taking it too far. It's it's more the unconscious eating of meat and over consuming. And, exactly. And a lot of people don't give a fuck about animal suffering, and mm. that's a problem. And there's a lot of animals that I if you see, like I, I don't eat pig. I haven't eaten pig since my first ayahuasca trip seven years ago, almost. Mm. It was a filthy animal. We just watched Pulp Fiction. I don't I don't eat swine. <laughs> they're filthy animal. <laughs> what about a dog? Would you consider them filthy? No, they're not a filthy animal, but they got personality. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, are you going to make another video with Jared? Yeah, of course. He's like, you know, he's one of my best mates. We're always going to make videos together. Just being having a bit of a mental reset, you know, and then eventually going to go much harder on making videos based on philosophy and theology, but like real shit. Maybe even we should react to like my old videos. Ooh, I think that would be good. Bullshit that this guy used to say. <laughs> I, like, oh. I used to just listen to like Terrence McKenna and Alan Watts, but now I realize like Alan Watts is a, is a sophist, which means that they use clever words and rhetoric, mm. but the actual logic of their argument is not even existent. Mm. In other words, it's people who sound smart and philosophical, but... It's like, hang on a sec, I could wreck you right now. You know what I mean? Rhetoric. Fruit in season is very natural to eat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not a carnival. <laughs> I don't think that fruit and plants are bad. It's good for you. If anything, I'm st I would st I'm still plant-based. Mm -hmm. Like more than 50% of my diet Just is every plants. every now and then you have, um, have a meat. I definitely do conscious, unconscious meat eating. I still get random meat from the store. It's just that the more natural meat is super expensive over here. Yeah, I, I, I get it. Because mm. here, like, it's easy for me to say, like, oh, yeah, don't eat factory farm meat. Get good quality meat. But for us, it's so cheap and easy. Like, there's yeah. kangaroos <laughs> everywhere, dude. Yeah. You know? Even grass-fed beef is, or cow is very, very cheap. Organic is more important. I also live in Tweed. Makes it so much cool. Vegan orgy with my wife and I. <laughs> We're monogamous. Sorry. Sorry. As much sorry. as my carnal. Sorry, not sorry. <laughs> uh, as, as much as my carnal body would love to How dare have you. sex with everyone. How dare you. Morally. It's I'm crazy to see you. How many different. Isn't funny? Like, I remember when he was like the spokesperson of open relationships. And now he ended up getting married and breaking up. That's why I've, I've just never seen a, a poly relationship actually succeed in the long long term i had a girlfriend that kind of oh, wait. if you do it right it's a different story because well, you even got to a point where you were considering it and i was like fuck that's a big thing to ask me give me some time let me think about it and <laughs> give me give me the pros give me the stuff and we'll, we'll seriously contemplate <clears throat> it that I that was his suggestion <laughs> don't go obviously we didn't do it don't go too hard on your old self I got a lot from videos, not to mention just the entertainment. Yeah, no, I'm so hard on myself. It's like my, it's like my future self is always talking shit about me. I do that a lot, but I also it's just. But in a way, it's like I feel like I need to be hard on myself because it wasn't just what I believed and what I was saying. It's because I was spreading it to the world and influencing other people. So it was like the blind leading the blind sort of thing. So, mm -hmm. what are your guys' perspective on Christianity? <laughs> We're both like. E? <laughs> there you go now I have, I have a lot to say about christianity but it's so it's just so where do you begin seriously where do you begin mm. but it's something that i've definitely been delving very deep into the last couple of years and it's definitely a, a big part of what helped me get out of my existential despair a few years ago mm. i didn't go deep into christianity but i I opened my heart and mind to it because I'm like, all right, obviously the path that I was going to led me nothing but into hell and torment and mm. confusion. So I'm like, okay, I got to like rethink my whole life, you know? And yeah, just, I started li listening a little bit. I think Jordan Peterson sort of like opened the door. Obviously Jordan Peterson has a very kind of like psychological perspective on the Bible and, th and that's fine. You know, that you got to start somewhere, but then eventually I, I got into other other figures like Jonathan Peugeot and then uh, eventually getting deeper into Orthodox Christianity because I think a lot of people's perspective on Christianity is like Protestant or Catholic 
But Orthodox Christianity is the true original church of Christianity. So if you're ever going to learn about it or critique it, you should do it from that perspective. It goes a lot deeper. It makes a lot of sense. I was raised Catholic um, and then... I know, like, I never stopped believing in God or anything. I just didn't, re didn't really believe in religion. And then I kind of, like, drifted here and there and then somehow I've just come back to Catholicism. Yeah. Mm. I like the idea of being a good Catholic girl. Well, yeah, mm. it's good. Mm -hmm. Or if you, if you were a new ager and you didn't believe in monogamy, then how could I trust you? Mm. Yeah, see? No. I wouldn't. Hold on. I think there are two types of relationships, the serious ones, then the other ones which people are together just for sexual pleasure. Both are fine so, so as long as both people are aware of it. Yes. Yeah. And you don't get married because if you get married and it's only for sex, then you've, you've fucked up. Yeah, completely. Uh, hang on. Are you Tolkien, Tolkien fans? Been to New Zealand? I have been to New Zealand. I actually went with Adam. I've got a video on it and I love Tolkien. I've just been re- discovering Lord of the Rings because Tolkien is a was a devout Catholic. So the whole Lord of the Rings mythology, even though it's not a direct allegory because he actually disliked allegories, the, the principalities and truths that make up the whole Lord of the Rings universe is very, very Catholic. And it kind of blows your mind when you see it from this new perspective. Hey, my brother's on. And he's like, and the, um, what are we talking about? Lord of the Rings. Yes. Sorry, I sidetracked. <laughs> um, oh, what were we talking about? Uh, give me a second. I got distracted. You lost me. Nah, you suck. I'm sorry. But anyways, oh, yes, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a Tolkien fan. I love Lord of the Rings. And what you'll find in the Lord of the Rings universe is there is no relativist. Everyone talks about, you know, the very absolute good and evil. I, I, I can make a whole video. I could make a documentary on unpacking this. And I'm, I actually bought a book. It's called Finding God in Lord of the Rings. And it's like, <sighs> just kind of unpacks the symbology behind it. Oh, yeah, because so it goes profound. into like um, the difference. Magic used in Lord of the Rings and the magic used in Harry Potter. No, that's, no? that's just a different video, but that's mm, another okay. interesting point. Sorry. <laughs> because Harry Potter is pagan Christianity. No, sorry, it's just pagan spirituality. Lord of the Rings is like Catholic Christianity. And you can see the difference because in Harry Potter, all these young kids are like doing all these magic spells. Like, mm, Lingardium Leviosa. Lingardium Leviosa. Lingardium. Whatever. <laughs> But the point is that everyone in this universe is using magic that they don't understand. And it's just a mystery. And they just say, hey, whatever. They're opening up portals and look what happens. Actually, that's a really good point because in the the Dark Prince or whatever, um, Harry Potter, when he finds the book with the random spells and then he uses one without actually knowing what it is, what it does, he uses it on Draco when they fight in the bathroom and he completely fucks him up and he starts bleeding everywhere and he's like, fuck, what have I done? Yeah, so. because ma magic is inherently dark. Mm, mm, Whereas mm. in Lord of the Rings, like, yes, there's magic, but the only people who use magic nearly willy are the evil ones, like Saruman. Whereas Gandalf, yeah, he uses magic, but if you think about it, man, how many times did he go into battles and instead of using magical spells, he's clubbing people? Yeah. With his star. Yeah. Because he's and, using his skill. And even the his ring, power. the ring of power. When Frodo is like, take it, take it. It's like, no, don't tempt me, Frodo, because he understands that he doesn't understand it. Yeah. And that which you don't understand will eventually take control over you. So there's a, yeah. It's fucking, it's Drop mind blowing. Walk away. That was a good one. <laughs> Lord of the Rings, man. It's the best. It's the greatest. And it still holds up, doesn't it? Yeah. I'm, yeah. Completely. Uh, I'm contemplating a Lord of the Rings. What are your kind of thoughts on New Age you... concepts? Uh, at the end of the day, it's satanic. And I'm not even saying this from a Christian perspective. The founder of Satanism, I forgot his name, whatever, Google it. The, li the literal founder of Satanism, he quotes that New Age practices is just, uh, is just Satanism without the devil. And that's as Satanists, we should reclaim our new age practices. And if you look at all the Satanists back in the day, there was Helena Blavatsky or something like that, uh, Alistair Crowley, all these guys, they were all into this new age stuff with the chakras and the crystals and astral projection, all this stuff. 
So it's like, it, for me, it's hard to ignore if you look at the actual foundation of new age and it's all from like satanic people. Mm. So like, what do you do with that? Mm. Interesting. Interesting. It's relativism. At the end of the day, relativism is no bueno. Mm, mm, mm. Uh, your live stream with Jay Dyer was also the most ex- unexpected crossover I've ever seen come up in my recommendation. Yeah, dude, Jay Dyer was like one of the my main influences and kind of leaning me towards the like orthodoxy. Yeah, I've learned a lot from him and I'd love to continuously collab with him. Again, I'm just kind of stepping up my or trying to step up my philosophical game before I converse. Because I did. I felt really dumb. What about pagan religions that worship nature and God in their own ways? Isn't all labels for the same thing? No, that's relativism. Again, it's the. It's also because in the New Age, they believe that all religions basically lead to the same mountaintop, which is just, it's not true, you know? And worship, and that's the thing. There's a difference between worshiping nature and God because I differentiate between universe and and creator. Hi, thanks for the five pounds, mate. Hi, any tips on keeping up spiritual lifestyle? I always get into it and lose interest. I don't know if there's anything I can do to change it. First of all, your language. You're mm-hmm. saying you you always get into it and lose interest. So you're, you're already speaking in absolutes. He does this to me all the time. Yeah. I say something like, oh, I'm always late. And he's like, change your word of phrasing. It's like, okay. So I always kind of stop myself and I'm like, that I need to be better or, you know, I've started. It's, yeah, continue. You you have better. Mm, I can only kind of recommend what I'm into now. So I'd say maybe read up Orthodox theology. I feel like it's very grounded and will kind of, because w- once you build up a proper map of reality, like an actual grounded philosophy using logic and reason something that's actually coherent with the rest of reality it really it grounds you whereas if you choose a philosophy that's kind of like airy fairy and has no grounding but sounds really spiritual then you're going to end up confused and lost in life i remember I see seeing something where it was like if you're serious about change you'll make you don't care what time you have to wake up you don't care if you have to make um to continue like doing incorporating a little bit every day because it's going to take steps i feel like a lot of people want to rush to the finish line and just Sha- be there hang on chakras is from india and i'm not saying chakras is invented by these satanists i'm saying that all of them taught that taught it that's all i'm saying mm. and obviously it's from hinduism um i went to india <laughs> but keep, keeping up with the the spiritual lifestyle um don't go too hard so soon take small steps and then start running do you get me like i feel like a lot of people just want to just start running but you need to take the small steps and incorporate a little bit in your life every day and then it should just come natural but you have to be consistent with it as soon as you realize that you're being lazy or slack that's when you've got to be like okay i've got to get back into it i don't know if that helps Hmm. i hope that helps (laughs) Uh, let's see. Yeah, new age equals Satanism equals solipsism equals nihilism equals moral relativism. Yeah, because at the end of the day, all the because new age is it's hard to kind of define. Of, okay, the new age is this because the truth of the matter is that new age is basically like a spiritual buffet approach, which is just cherry picking from all these different religions to whatever makes you feel good. Mm. There's no real core dogma, but there are certain principles that do unite all new age believers no matter what religion you're you're picking from and that's relativism moral relativism two you are your own god mm. those are, there, there's a couple but those are the two main ones is basically they believe that it, there is no right or wrong and that we are the we are ultimately god mm. and there's there is yeah there's no real evil mm. there's no judgment there's no responsibility because everyone is just a universe anyway so it doesn't really matter what you do so how does that not sound <laughs> like Satanism? <laughs> and that's why it, it, New Age really attracts young people, especially young people who are into drugs, hence me, <laughs> because you get to just believe in your direct experiences. Tom's Tom's latest drug? Yep. Pana. Pana chocolate. This is his latest obsession. <laughs> 
I think someone asked me about Gnosticism somewhere. Uh, I can't find it, so whoever asked me about Gnosticism, you can ask feel free me. to ask again. Yeah. <laughs> Life is only an experience. Just live it. Don't take it too seriously. Yes and no. Yes and no, because there's a lot of it that you should take very seriously. And, again, that's the, the new age trap. Religion is very needed. We need order, 100%. We're religious. Well, the thing is, like, even people who's like, oh, screw religion, whether you're an atheist or a new ager, you're default, you're always going to default to some religious belief anyway. You know, the what I mean? core values are, you know, <laughs> a, see, this guy's obviously never read the, a liar wrote the Bible. A just okay. First of all, one person didn't write the Bible, it was a whole bunch of people. <laughs> but, anyways, we're not going to get into that. That mm -hmm. you kind of just wrecked yourself there. Uh, Tom, they went with the most apocalyptic version. There was like 21 texts I could have used and were written by humans. Do you think your current belief is set in stone? I've actually been saying for a really long time that Tom's been leaning towards the, the Christianity. I've been saying to him for ages, I'm like, babe, I feel like, I feel like you're a Christian. And he's like, nah, 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 nah. And then when he started doing all his research and started reading the and Bible. The, uh, and there's so many lights. See, this is what, do you know what actually made me kind of open my eyes and go a little bit towards or ma made me more interested in Christianity is the fact that it's the most light about religion. Even right here, there's a few, like, you know, that Jesus was a parable about the sun in the sky, which can be easily refuted if you actually go into the historical mm. documents and, oh, he was a mushroom or this or that. But then you never hear that Buddha was a mushroom or Muhammad was an LSD tab or any other kind of religious figure. It's always Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. That's the enemy. Mm. And in New Age, everything is accepted except for Christianity. I can be a Muslim, a Hindu, a Buddhist, a Satanist, a pagan, a Wiccan, mm. a magic, a Harry Potter. And that's all fine. But then as soon as you... You go towards Christianity, everyone's like, hey, 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 what are you doing? Actually, oh, Jesus was this, Jesus was that. Yeah. Oh, actually, Christianity is about this. And it's all lies. It's all lies. Yeah. Or you do. You just have to go deeper into it and not just repeat what you hear online. Because I used to say all this stuff, so I'm, I understand. But it's... all I'll say is that it's interesting. I'd say I'm a Christian with Taoist beliefs. Plus, Christians are some of the most prosecuted people these days, it seems. Dude. Christians were always prosecuted. So it's, it's always been the case in Revelation. Yeah. Christians were, mar were were killed, man, since the beginning. They've always been prosecuted, and it's for a reason. And he said, and Jesus said that this, this was all going to happen. So Revelation is coming to pass. That's very, very interesting. What do you think about the effects of porn on society? Oh, it's twisting our minds and our relationship with our sexuality. It's turning us more immoral it's making us twisted what more it's taking I'm, our life force i've known some people that no judgment here because i'm like yeah, porn's a bit <laughs> but i realize it's bad you know of course yeah yeah there's con there's consequences it's hard it. it's, it's one i've of known the some people quit, that have lost themselves so much in the porn world that they can't get sexually aroused with their part like they can't do it in real life with someone because they're just so kind of like that big mouth episode where um what's his name i can't remember but he gets so deep into the porn that he actually goes into the world and it's like he's gone i like it's it's not healthy it's not healthy at all uh how can you avoid the weed withdrawal how can you make oh it's kind of hard to avoid man mm. that's the thing about you know if you fucked up and you've smoked weed all this time, you're gonna have to just suffer. Yeah. yeah. What comes a sauna, up, I guess, could make down. it come a little bit quicker, but yeah, you, you can't avoid the suffering. I think you have to learn to embrace it as a way of like changing your perspective on it as a way of you're being cleansed, but it's not gonna be easy. Bill Gates is an atheist and he's dictating global health thoughts. <sighs> There's obviously a huge problem with that. <laughs> He's not a medical expert. And, yeah, I, yeah. I don't want to go too deep into that. But does No your, bueno. That's all I'll say. Does no bueno. your future wife learn to cook or you're going to live on fast food? We don't eat fast food. No, we do. It's not. 
all the time. Or we try to do it less and less. We don't really eat fast food. Like the only thing we really eat, well, you yesterday. do, you yeah. do. I don't. I work most, I work 38 hours, like, when I get home. I'm exhausted, but I still cook. So I cook. The, the Bible is corrupted. Based on what? How do you know that? Again, you got to go deeper. Like, make sure that what you're saying is true before you say it. Because people just, again, we, we have a natural aversion to the Bible and Christianity. That's why people get so, like, they're, they're so quick to put a, hang on, what? <laughs> there are a lot of people asking if we want kids. Ah. Uh, but no, the Bible hasn't been changed since its inception. And that is provable. <laughs> <laughs> Full-time work can be misery, yes, but <laughs> the, I'm quite enjoying the, it. the Bible is corrupted. Great, great argument. <laughs> <laughs> yep, I'm, conf I'm con Are you a fundamental Christian or are you just following the Bible as a lifeguard? Uh, well, see, I don't like the word fundamental Christian because then people have the this view that it's like I'm a Protestant. I'm not. I'm going towards orthodoxy, so whatever, whatever you want to call that. And I wouldn't even call myself that because until you get baptized, you're not really – a Christian, right? Is that how it works? Mm. So I don't even know. It's I just can't. something I'm leaning towards. I'm not knowledgeable enough to really. And it takes give me this years. Opinion. Yeah, exactly. It's taking me. It's, yeah. Is baptism required fuck, to go to heaven? Fuck the Bible. I don't think so. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think baptism is required to go to heaven if you believe in heaven. Because at the end of the day. God will never turn his back on his children, no matter how much you've sinned, no matter what bad you've done. If at the end you embrace God, he will embrace you. Doesn't matter what you've done. I know, it, I mean, yeah, that's what I where, believe anyway. Where is my bacon, Tom? You hit it, I know it. <laughs> You're right about Christians being more persecuted with other religions. And I think the reason why is because people associate Christianity with the hatred of gays. Trans exactly. Yeah. It's never been about that. It's always been about hating the sin, not the sinner. Yeah. And if you're hating the sinner, well, guess what? We're all sinners. <laughs> so if you're if you're going to be hating on another person, it's already you're not straight up. Those are what's important. And look up the original language on Blue Letter Bible. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe. I'm so glad you guys <laughs> found Jesus. Yeah, see, baptism washes away all the previous sins. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so if, you, con like if that. you consciously go into that and make that decision, that's absolutely beautiful. I love When I saw my sister get um, born again, I remember seeing her come up from the water and that look of <sighs> was just so beautiful. I was so happy for her that she had found her place that she'd found, her religion and everything. So it was, yeah, if you <laughs> have that conscious choice, that's amazing. Do you still respect Eastern religions like Buddhism and Taoism, Taoism that are longly established, not just New Age Wu <laughs> Um, I do. And, in fact, Buddhism was the first religion. Just let me say on record that Christianity is literally the last religion that I even went to, went to Buddhism, Hinduism, every philosophy that you've ever heard of. Oh, yeah. Even I dabbled into Satanism even for a while, um, Taoism, all the, even is I was reading the Quran before I read the Bible, so trust me when I say that Christianity was the last stop is is for a reason I had a, and I think a lot of the reason even I can guarantee you a lot of people who are like kind of shitting on the Bible and stuff like that, it's because of daddy issues. We have a when we have daddy issues and we have a, a dysfunctional relationship with our father. Of course, we're going to have this natural aversion towards the Christian father, right? And I think that's probably why I rebelled against it so much because, you know, I had some issues in that area and I wanted to rebel against God and authority mm. and anything that represents a father and authority and to submit yourself to something greater. It takes a lot of humility, which unfortunately we live in a time where pride is the is basically the false idol of today's mm. age. People are worshipping themselves, literally. Like people believe that they're God. And then if you're God, then that means that there is nothing greater than you that has authority over you. And if nothing has authority over you, 
that means that morality is just relative. And if morality is just relative, that means that there is no right and wrong. And if there is no right and wrong, then you can do whatever you want. Do as thou wilt, which is literally the pillar of Satanism. Do what thou wilt. And as a kid, it sounds awesome, especially, you know, as a kid with daddy issues and you're into drugs and you're rebelling. Yeah, fuck it. I'll do what I want. Do what I want. I'll do what I want. Mm. So you got to, sometimes you got to look at it from a psychological perspective. Why is there such an aversion to it? Yeah. Actually, that's really Do you think point. Buddha like could have been Jesus? No. Buddha was a coward who left his family. I remember that. Yep. The Jesus Jesus probably would have he scolded saw, Buddha. He saw so much suffering in the world that he chose. I'm just going to meditate under a tree. Like he had a personal masseuse. People were basically, I know they weren't worshipping him, but if you actually go to Thailand, there is a lot of that. There's literally golden statues of Buddha. <laughs> He's a false idol. Even if that wasn't the original intention, that's ended up happening anyway. Mm. But nah, Jesus definitely. I, I used to love Buddha. He was my he was my guy, you know. I used to think, yeah, Buddha, Jesus, Muhammad, yeah, whatever. But they're fundamentally different character uh, archetypes and stories. But no, I think Buddha was a coward. But I do I do respect it, and I see the psychological practicality. I see the tools, and it helps a lot of people sometimes, you know, like meditation and stuff like that. Keep your mind still, mm -hmm. witnessing, but I just wouldn't go all the way with it anymore. Not sun worship. We sh we worship the one who created the sun. Exactly. Uh, why do you lean towards Christianity? Do you believe in actual theology? Yes. Again, the orthodox theology. So before you start criticizing or go into it, you have to look at the orthodox theology. Protest Protestant Christianity has, what, over 20,000 denominations in the U.S. alone, that already should tell you that there's something not right with that. And then the Catholic Church, from what I've been learning, is got infiltrated. I mean, is it really that surprising that a lot of it is satanic? I don't know. We are weird creatures. Yes, we are. Very. <laughs> <laughs> Christianity is worshipping Satan. You're confused. Oh, I, I, that's funny. I thought it was Christianity, not Satananity. Huh. Um, Christianity, I was raised atheist and have gone through many phases, but never found any click. Uh, Jay Dial is probably a good way, or uh, uh, Church of the Eternal Logos. He's really good, especially because he used to be like, he used to have a Terence McKenna channel, just uploading Terence McKenna speech. He was into Alan Watts, and so he understands the new age on such a deep level and Eastern religions, and he's studying it academically. Um, so, yeah, so if you – it depends. Like if you're, like, intellectual and because like, you said you're an atheist, I'm going to assume that you're, you're more on your mind, then, yeah, he could really help. So Jay Dyer, Church of the Eternal Logos, like good places to start and it will blow your mind. It's the deepest spirituality that I've ever heard in my life. It goes really, really deep, and it makes sense. You hit the nail on the head on that one. Rebellion sums it up for me on why I changed my beliefs, not servium. So why would I go to heaven? So would I still go to heaven if I accept any old God or does it just have to be the Christian God? Well, there is only the one God, which is that, yeah. I believe that we are of God and connected to God, but not better than God or separate from everything. We're not trying to sound preachy or anything. We're just, you know... Uh, yeah, like you guys are just asking me questions. Yeah, just yeah. Answering These are honestly. honest, honest answers. <laughs> of course. Congrats, Tom and Yesenia. What do you think of the Christian hell? Personally, I struggle to accept the idea. It disturbs me deeply. It, it should. It should disturb you that's deeply. That's the point. <laughs> I think that's the purpose of hell. It's to, yeah. it's to scare you back into heaven. Mm -hmm. That's That's why free will exists. It's like you can choose the evil path. Not recommended. You're going to suffer a lot and all this kind of stuff, but you can do it. Mm. Yeah, it's. I personally struggle to accept it, but I've, man, I've I've been to unfathomable depths of hell, even on just this this earth realm. So imagine on a cosmic level. I mean, yeah, I believe it's a real place. The idolatry in Buddhism is antithetical to the actual teachings and a product of ancient Greek culture. Exchange. Okay, yeah, I thought so. That's why I, I know that Buddhism isn't isn't originally about that. But when I went to Thailand, I just remember seeing all these people like kind of worshiping Buddha. I'm like, do do you? know what this is about he, he was just a man you know that right <laughs> i 
I used to be Christian, Tom and Yesenia. Uh, and I must say that my life has gotten significantly better since I left and focused on loving, just loving people. I still do my best to respect all religions. That's nice. I would have thought. Obviously not a. You should But were you orthodox? Again, that, that's that's what I'm seeing now. A lot of what gets attacked in Christianity isn't like true Christianity. I would have thought like loving people was part of Christianity. The Satan anti joke was nonsense. I know. <laughs> Jokes are nonsense. <laughs> this chat is the chat the world needs to see right now. People are getting isolated. And I don't want to see friends suffer so much. And Defo is a spiritual fight going on. Yeah, the, the spiritual war is real. Yeah. 100%, dude. The world is thirsty. Can I read a quote? I'm going to read a quote because it's very relevant, relevant to that. Tick tock, tick tock. Bear with us, guys, while Tom looks for the Our quote. struggle is not against enemies of blood and flesh, but against rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. That's where the war is at. And all the evil that kind of manifests within this earth realm is a manifestation of something higher. So that's why it's a, a big mistake. When you're really noobish and you go into new age spirituality, you think that, oh, once you transcend this physical dimension and go into the spiritual realm, evil ceases to exist. But then who's telling you that? Mm -hmm. Deception is real. Thoughts on dating nowadays. Oh, I'm glad I'm not into that world. If we had broken up or were to break up, I'd be <laughs> done. <laughs> I'd be done. I would just focus on myself, my all career, and that's it. All religion should be attacked. It's all wrong. All of it. I've studied it all. This guy's got like 50 PhDs and shit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, funny guy. All religion purpose is control. But see, that's the thing. You, but you need some sort of order. You need leaders. You need authority. You can't you can't just expect every trust every human on their own. But yeah. I get it. Trust me, I I, I get all I've made out I was the biggest hater of all religions, so I get it all. Would this be uploaded as a video after? Yeah, no, what's the But what if you wish to fight people? Go ahead. You do you man. But I will be your enemy and I will stop you. Uh, spiritual warfare is real. Anyone who's religious lost, lose the battle. Don't get me wrong. I love God. Do you have daddy issues, third eye boogie? Honest question. You obviously don't like control. You don't like authority, right? So I was controlled too much. That's why, because I was a good little girl, did everything mum and dad said to the point where I was like, I don't want to anymore. That's why every time Tom tries to tell me to do something, I'm like, don't tell me what to do. Thoughts on Leo Gura? Yeah. He's lost his damn mind. <laughs> <laughs> He's mad. Christianity is being less and less relevant in the West. It's kind of terrifying. The leftist progressivism is making the government into a golden calf. It is becoming less relevant, but at the same time, there's also a, a lot of people going back. To it, but it's also you got to think, man. This this is being prophesized. You know, Christianity was it was always foretold that Christianity was going to be the enemy of society. Been requested to so give. It's all good. It's all good. Bria from Me Bank a shout No out. mother issues. I said daddy issues. <laughs> <laughs> that answers your question. Um, you completely spoke over my shout out. Bria Sorry. from Me Bank. Hi, Bria. <laughs> Do, 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 do. It's because they are so lost and don't know what the fuck to believe in. Fucking media slash socials used badly. What was it that made your guys move towards Christianity? Well, for me personally, it was just uh, an ungodly amount of suffering and pain and torment and confusion. No, do you know what it was, else. honestly? It was that he was he was doing research. And when Tom does research, he really just kind of throws himself into the deep end and goes through just like everything. So he started 
buying all these different Bibles, um, all these different kind of like study Bibles. And then he had friends as well, like, oh, you should read this, you should read that. And the more he read, the more he got into it, he was like, okay, okay. And it started resonating with a lot of it. That's mm. where it really started. And there's still a lot that I'm trying to reconcile, like with psychedelics and Christianity. I'm, I'm still trying to reconcile. I think there's a, a lot of, a big part of me that still wants to believe that I can continue using psychedelics. Uh, but we'll see. I don't know. It's dude, this this thing takes it takes years and years and years to even get a a decent understanding of what this is about. All right. Bruno asks, but according to Christianity, you can be a good person, still face eternal in eternal interdimensional torture simply for not believing in Jesus. How's that fair? I really need help understanding. <sighs> Do you know how to answer this? Again, please don't look. I'm, I'm a noob when it comes to this stuff. So it's which Christianity are you referring to? Well, Is all that of them. Like the that, new that, age Christianity. No, nah, that would orthodox? no. That 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 would be all of them. Because how can I you feel. be Christian and not believe in Jesus? Yeah, because that's what Christian is. Yeah, believing in Jesus. That's what confuses me. I oh, know, but it doesn't say that. It says according to Christianity, you can still be a good person. It's like if you're a good person, mm -hmm. you're doing everything right, but you don't mm -hmm. believe in Jesus, do you still go to hell? Like, how do you how do you reconcile that? And there's, I think there are two ways of answering this because there's a difference of like, if you, let's say if you were born in some remote island and you've never come across the Bible, you've never come okay. across Jesus. Does that mean you that's go from to ignorance? Him? No, yeah. you don't. Mm -hmm. It's when you consciously reject it. It's when people come to you say, "Hey, yeah, this is the truth." Yeah, and of course you have to do the extra work of confirming that truth if it is true. And yeah, I think it's consciously denying him. Mm -hmm. that according to that theology, you go to hell. I don't know. Honestly, I think it's what depends at the, at, at the end of your life. If at the end of your life you still decide that you don't believe in Jesus, then that's Yeah, as, that's long, as long as you do it before you <laughs> die. Uh, but, but then know. even Again, I'm not, then, I'm not in, that, so in that moment know. of death, you don't know what happens. You don't know. Like, so, like Jesus mm. might come to you and that might be when you're like, oh, you are real. But mm. I don't I don't know. I don't believe that good people go to hell. I just I don't. Whether you you believe in Jesus or not, I I don't believe mm. if you're a good if you're a good person and you have good morals and you live a good life, I don't think that you go to hell. Mm. But I I don't know. But we're not God. Leo, <laughs> Leo Gura would disagree. With me, <laughs> but I'm not God. I'm not omniscient. I'm not all knowing. <laughs> I don't know what the answer is. I'm a human being with a limited mind. I thought this was common sense saying this stuff. <laughs> Apparently it's not. Apparently not. You are no. God. I'm God. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for having the courage to speak a little bit uh, about Christianity and the spiritual drug use. Yeah. I think it's interesting to talk about. Like, if, even if you guys don't believe any of this shit, it's still interesting to talk about. It's just the, what I find it interesting is like the, the, that kind of reaction that people have, that mm. nasty reaction, either it's, no, it's all bullshit or they'll twist and make lies about about Jesus. Don't all get me wrong. Stuff. I was getting a little bit worried. I'm like, oh, are we sounding really preachy right now? Like we don't mean to. We're just honestly answering questions because yeah, people ask. Yeah. I wasn't going to talk about any of this stuff, but as soon as I saw a question, I'm like, okay. <laughs> uh, I've been watching your channel once... for a while now. I gasped seeing you two are getting married. Congrats, you guys. Y'all are the cutest. Thank you. We're very excited. Actually believing in something greater than yourself gives you much more power. Exactly. That's the thing because like someone's like, once you believe you need something outside of you, you've lost your power. But that's literally how Lucifer talks. Mm. I don't need anything. All you need is yourself. Do what thou wilt. Ye shall be as gods. I am God. I have the power. I know. I don't need to submit myself to something greater. Pfft, that's weak. It's control. Is it? Is it? I don't think so. Uh, it's actually humility. That's the true me meaning of humility is to know your place. And I used to have a huge spiritual ego and used to believe all this stuff. And all it did was bring me through a path of pain and misery and, and confusion. Because the, th the, the truth is I don't have the strength myself to do this. Mm. Mm. We're not powerful. Yeah. We're not that powerful. To humble yourself, to be like, I need I'm not God. Sure. Yeah, I, ne I need help outside of myself. I can't do this. It's too much. Imagine having that 
pressure on yourself to do everything yourself. Didn't um, but, Elliot Hulse do that? Yeah, that's how he quit with. Yeah. He, he just submitted, like, I, I, I can't do this. I don't have the strength to do this. Follow the path of least resistance. I wouldn't agree in today's world. I feel like you need to go the path of yeah, the most resistance. Yeah, because because if I follow the, the path of really resistance, resistance, I'd be jacking off every day, eating junk food, smoking, fucking doing all these yeah. drugs every day. That's the least resistance for me, anyway. Why wouldn't you be able to use psychedelics? Uh, I don't know. You know, this is something that, like, scratch Christianity. There's nothing even to do with that. I was already kind of coming to that. Those yeah. yeah, just like I just don't need it anymore. I just found it at a point, and and I started witnessing in other people. Like I see no difference in someone who's done ayahuasca once, had a profound experience, and then someone who's done ayahuasca two hundred times. And if you you know, I just don't see how it can mm. continuously like seriously give you those amounts of spiritual gains. I just I just don't believe it. Why did you exit veganism? All right, we already went into it, but in short, my health fell apart. I became mentally depressed, anxious, overly sensitive to life, pale skin, weak teeth, weak nails. Uh, you look like a junkie. I look like a junkie. Cool. Uh, and I was doing it really healthy. Let, let me just say that when I, when, I, when I was on the vegan diet, I would say I was more healthy than what I'm eating right now. But yet right now I, I feel a lot better. And then ever since eating meat, it just changed my life forever in the most the best way possible, spiritually, physically, emotionally, all of it long term and it was hard to ignore and then that led me into going deeper into veganism not just kind of taking it at face value of what the activists were saying but actually going deeper how are these studies made what are some counter arguments what are the counter arguments of those counter arguments what actually holds up and then yeah came to the conclusion that basically veganism is not bueno veganism is malnutrition yeah exactly What's the difference between Orthodox and New Age Christianity? Well, first of all, Orthodox is the original church. So that even in the Bible, when they made the church, that's the Orthodox mm. church that they kept going because there's a lot of oral traditions that don't get written down and that gives you context on the Bible that actually helps you understand it at a coherent level. That's it. That's it. Damn, Tom, you could wreck Alan Watts. Yeah, I wish I could debate him right now. <laughs> And I'm not even that good of a philosopher at all. I'm like, still know what I mean? So imagine, yeah. But he was a sophist. Sorry, man, that's not true. We are God. We have the power inside us. That's what Jesus thought. See, again, yeah. All right. But then if we are God, I'm saying we're not God. So whose authority is more, you or mine? Which God is greater? <laughs> uh, I agree. Psychedelics are only needed when they are needed. Yeah, exactly. If they're even really needed. It's about finding the root cause of why you feel like you need it. When you say the Christian God is the only God, do you mean that other philosophies can't be parts of the same soul? Well, it can be, something can be similar. For example, like if you look at mathematics, all right, let's just take it simple. Mm -hmm. One plus one equals two, right? Yep. Someone could say one plus one equals elephant. Another person could say one plus one equals 1.9. Another person could say one, point, one plus one equals 1. 1.8. And you could say that, yeah, one, point, one plus one equals 1. 1.9 is actually very close to the truth, but it's mm -hmm. still not the entire truth. So I, I think a lot of religions get like really close. They get that, but just not quite there. Mm. And that's probably a horrible metaphor. I'm, so, I'm sorry. We are not God, but a part of it. Exactly. The all is within the earthworm, but the earthworm is far from being the all. This is even in Hermeticism. Hermeticism is what debunked the whole you are God nonsense. Love that video you did with Tristan. Any chance you guys going to collab again? Oh, yeah, that's right. The weed guy, yeah. Um, not anytime soon. I'm just, but I'll be open to it. What is a wife? One flesh. <laughs> Terrence McKenna never said anything practical that can help everyday life. Just about a jargon. Yeah, he's interesting. Like, from an entertainment point of view, you know, the mushroom. When in doubt, double the dose. No. <laughs> Saludo desde de, de Chile. Chile. ¿Cómo estamos, hermano? <laughs> bueno, por Julio. <laughs> McKenna was mostly just interested in archetypes. Uh, I'm looking to take psychedelics just to experience them. Is that good enough reason? Mm, I would say no. 
But again, people do it all the time. That's up to you. At the we end don't. Of the day. We're, we're not going to encourage that. But if you want to, you want to. I don't feel like that's. I don't know. I don't know. Thoughts on David Ike? Uh, I haven't really gone too deep into it, but he basically believes that there are reptilians that are disguising themselves as humans, and those are the elites that are controlling the world. Basically, am I right here? Like. In a nutshell, that's basically what he believes, right? Yeah. Uh, no, no, not I you. I mean, like, what do you, what do you think? I have absolutely no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot opinion on this. People from Chile speak Spanish. Yeah, we all, speak. All people from South America do. Yeah, so except we, for Brazil, but our language Portuguese. is called Castellano, which is like a slang Spanish. So it's like the Australian English compared to like the American English or the English English. It's just a. A different accent and a different um different words different slang some a little bit but yeah colombia colombia someone said i looked colombian he was chilean and he's like i would have thought you were colombian i'm like really i look very very chilean <laughs> very chilean uh what are your thoughts on fitness influencer connor murphy and his descent into madness after his ayahuasca trip his instagram is insane uh yeah, I just I feel for the guy, man. I hope that he comes to his senses, but he's clearly lost his mind and seems to be in a very manic state of just constantly jumping from philosophy to philosophy to philosophy without any groundedness. And that's what happens when if you if you are a manic person and you're already kind of unhinged and unanchored from reality, and then you take all these psychedelics, and yeah, it's going to make you more insane. So it kind of makes sense. But no, I, I hope, I genuinely wish him all the best. Do you feel that you and your future wife form a collective or do you have complementary individuality? We have complementary individuality, I reckon. Or both. I, I feel like it's a collective and. Because we're both very but isn't different. That what complement, isn't that what a collective is? Is complementary individuality? individuality. I guess because we're both very different, but we're also very similar. Like we complement each other. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But what exactly means this believing in Jesus thing, historical existence, or the fact that he resurrected from the dead? Well, all of it. And but at the end of the day, it's more that Jesus is God, literally, and that's what the Holy Trinity is. Theology, mm -hmm, so they mm -hmm. believe that there are three persons. Even if you look at Genesis, man, which is fucking mind blowing, because this was written thousands of years before Jesus walked the earth. That yep. even God was speaking in plural, like we make, we will make man in our image. So us and ours already implying plurality. Not he didn't say my image. He said our image. An image is singular. So that explains the distinction between energy and essence so god is one in essence there is only one god but then there's three energetical aspects of god right so you've got the father which is kind of like the mind the godhead i guess the fountainhead yeah and then you've got the son who's the word the wisdom truth and then you've got the holy spirit which is god in movement that's why it even says like god made the heaven and earth right which is the father and then it said the spirit of god was hovering over the waters which okay. is the, again, why why does it say God? And then the next line it says the spirit of God. And then it said the God spoke the word, let there be light. So this was already kind of mentioned in the beginning. That's literally in the beginning. Mm. Um but yeah, that, that basically it's from from what I think, from what I've gathered, I think Orthodox theology believes that Jesus is literally God, but it's a different aspect. Of God. Yeah, so like there, God, there is only God, the one God. It's God being born and it's the paradox. This... He's hundred percent man, but also hundred percent God, and mm. he said it multiple times. Okay, yeah. interesting, interesting. Yeah, that's the that's the uh, belief. Congrats, on both of you. Thank you. Thank you. Ooh, I'm very excited. Every, he's been complaining. He's like every day <laughs> since the engagement, you've been talking about the wedding. I'm like, I'm just so excited. Finally. Get to call you my husband. Could Jesus represent mankind? No, Adam represents mankind. Mm. That's what Adam is. It means humanity. God is one, not three. Yeah, exactly. But that's what you're. What I'm saying is that there's, God is one in essence, but three different, three persons. It's still that's. It's like let's say 
I don't know how do I how do I explain this? That's why it's that is one, not three. It's like even the number three. Like the number three, it's like it's one, one numerical value, but mm-hmm. it represents three. Metaphysics. Okay. That's the only I think one. there's a better way to explain yeah, it. Yeah, I know. I know. It's hard. <laughs> yeah. But that's why you've got to just understand the difference between essence and energy. For example, energy, you guys know my energy, the way I speak, the way I move my hands, the way I'm dressed, what I'm, the videos that I make. These are all tells you about my essence, but you'll never know my true essence. You know what I'm saying? You can only know my energies. And that's the, the deal, I guess, what orthodox theology believes in. Uh, do you think marriage is a promise to God or just a social made thing? Ah, oh, it's a, it's a definitely a, you're getting God involved. That's what marriage is. We we went to a wedding not that long ago. One fork, three spikes. Yeah, yeah, okay. Getting closer. <laughs> getting closer. But the thing is, it's it's hard to because remember that God is unknowable and you can't really put it into words, but you can paint sort of metaphors mm-hmm. in a way to kind of explain how He works in mm. in a sense. Um, but yeah, anyways. What I was gonna say before you so rudely interrupted me um, was the the God involved with the wedding. Um, at the wedding, one of the pastors said something that really stuck with me, where it was like, basically, um, when when you're involving God, He's there to. Ah, oh, how did He say it? Do you remember how He was saying like two strings being wrapped around the one mm-hmm. to make it thicker to make it solid do you remember at christina's wedding when he because he was talking about like the holy trinity and involving god and that um you were just basically wrapping it up in him so that he can solidify your wedding your matrimony your Mm -hmm. union i'm not explaining it well i'm I'm sorry i don't remember it as well as but he's it was very profound damn (laughs) Why is the Bible male dominated? Why couldn't it be mother, daughter, and Holy Spirit? Well, there is actually a they that's why they honor uh Mary, which is the mother of God. You know? Of God, At least sure. the man part of God, obviously. No, they and even if you think about it was women who saw the resurrection first. Mm-hmm. They were the testifiers. Mary Magdalene. Yeah, no, they they really do honor honor women. Mm-hmm. But yeah, why isn't it in the feminine principle is like most Usually, the masculine pr- principle is all about seeding the seed yep. of creation, yep. whereas the feminine principle is about generating that reality into physical existence, yep. like the womb. Like all I have to do is shoot a load into you, ciao, I can go. Mm. But you have to generate that reality, you know. So maybe it's something to do with that. I don't know. <laughs> Congrats. I assume you proposed to her. I was very, very close. <laughs> to doing it myself, very close. And every time I'd make a joke about it, he'd be like, don't you dare. You can't take this away from me. But I was very, oh, I had some ideas. It would have been beautiful. I thought all marriage was religious. It is. It's very religious. Do you think it's believable? Do you think it's possible for someone to believe in Jesus and be a Buddhist at the same time? Sure. I guess that's how I started. I was a Buddhist yeah, first. that's pretty much me as well. And I always thought, even when I was like hardcore Buddhist, I'm like, hang on, how come when people go through really tough times in life, or let's say they go to a psychedelic trip and they get attacked by demons, it's never Buddha that they call out to. Mm. Buddha, help me. No. Even the fucking most hardcore atheist, if you put him in a scary enough place, they're going to pray to Jesus. It has that power. And I've heard a lot of stories of, again, non-Christians, atheists, they come across d- demonic attacks or uh, or sleep paralysis or even UFOs and they they call out Jesus and mm. and only that has that power to do that. And that's yeah. what it kind of was like, huh, interesting. Hmm. My mom I don't know what to do about that, but my mom had a dark entity. There was a there was a time that I had something following me around and it really scared me. Um it was a dark entity in my room and my mom was in Chile at the time visiting her her mom. And she was telling me that at one point she fell asleep by her bed holding her hand and she felt this Dementor-looking creature, like the Dementors from Harry Potter, 
uh, come up behind her and she felt it trying to suck her soul. And she started praying and she started saying, you know, no, you can't take me. My soul is um, God's, my soul, my soul belongs to Jesus, um, go away. And it let go and went away. And this was really fun, not funny, but at the same time or around the same time, I went through the exact same thing. Mm. In my bed, I woke up, I saw this demental looking thing and I started praying for it to go away. And I didn't tell my mom because I didn't want her to freak out. But when she came home, we had she told me about it, and I was like, "Mom, no way!" So, yeah, interesting. Because someone said, uh, "Why Christians always talk about Jesus more than God the Father?" It's because, again, Jesus is kind of bridges the gap. It, it Jesus represents the icon of God, so that way we can commute. Because the Father is so like. You can't really picture it, you know what I mean. Whereas with Jesus, you can you can put an image to it because we're very visual creatures, so it kind of gives us a closer connection to that. And then Jesus said that no one goes through the Father except through me. Uh, I don't know. Uh, well, this talk of dementors is terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> That's scary, yeah. man. Yeah. yeah. I freaked out. It was absolutely but, terrifying. I opened my eyes and I just see this dark hooded figure leaning over me. And I was like, oh, my God. But I was de- when I was in the deepest in my new age is when I started when I was having the most sleep paralysis, spiritual attacks, mm-hmm. really dark existential thoughts. And that's all cleared. Like it's like I could watch the most f- fucked up movie. And it won't like mess me up like it did before because yeah. I was so sensitive to it. You know, all, all my shields were down. So I love scary movies, but we stopped watching them because he's like, nah, it's opening a portal. And I was like, okay, fine. No scary movies. What should one do when totally lost in life? In what way? As in like lack of purpose or like you're lost, as in you just don't know what's up? I think because I feel like we all get lost at least once or twice in our lives, I think what's important is to be lost, be in that moment, accept that you're lost, but also understand that it is just temporary and it's all within your power to get out. You just have to have faith that you will come out of it. It just takes time and it does take effort. So if you're, if you're lost and it's like when you, when the kids get lost in the shopping center or whatever, what should you do? Do you just stay there or do you go and find like the information center and be like, excuse me, I'm lost. Help me. I don't know if that helps. Mm. I hope it does, but it's just. Do you think the DMT spirit slash entities wash down on us humans like a game? Yeah, for sure. Definitely. They're lingering. And, and when you smoke the DMT, you're entering their game. You're playing by their rules. They're just there that, waiting that's, for That's you. the only thing where I'm like, oh. I, like if I was, for example, like I, I have no intention of doing ayahuasca again, mm-hmm. but I would go to an ayahuasca ceremony as a witness, like without actually drinking it because I, I would maintain all my power. Mm. The spirits can't fuck with you mm. until you enter their game and play by their rules and accept their contract. Mm. Hmm. Interesting. <laughs> I've been lost since I was like four in my life. What do you think of ghosts? I don't know. Wait, I also when because there is there was a point in time where I was calling Tom and I was absolutely devastated, and he was trying to say this to me. You know, it's just temporary, and I'm like, no, no, no. This is how it's always been. I've always been lost. I've always been screwed. Nothing's gonna work for me. And then it took me a while and it's kind of like when you're job hunting, like you don't just put all your eggs in one basket. You're going everywhere, like pa, pa, pa. I think getting out and traveling, um, getting out of your comfort zone because you don't know where else you're comfortable. So it's just, it seems like it's forever. It does. It feels like it's an endless, painless, Mm. painless, painful. It feels like it's an endless painful cycle but instead of falling down 
try to do what you can to fall up. Does that make sense? I don't know. I'm trying. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, don't, don't be so hard on yourself. Yeah. You because just... I know what it's like to be lost. I know that desperation. I know that devastation yeah. of I'm not going to find prob- my people. I'm not going to find where I belong. It's probably why a lot of people get into psychedelics. So I kind of find a tribe and like lost. Like, what is life? What is spiritual? I've been lying to my whole life, and you've gone through this path. Like, look, I get it. We all look have, at we all the things lost. that you have in your life that you're grateful for. You know, things that because it's the little things. Again, like I, I think of Big Mouth. This was a little bit ridiculous when the the gratitude comes in and she's struggling to be grateful, and he's like. Just be grateful for anything. Start, start. She's like, oh, I don't know. I'm grateful for sour lollies. You know, it's just kind of starting with the smaller things. Mm. And then that will open your eyes to see, wow, I have a really good mum, or I have a really good dad or friend or this or that, like my dog, my cat. It's the little things you got to start That's with. how it starts, like how you speak to yourself. Yeah. You know, you want to shape your mind to look at more positive things. Yeah. We love you guys and wish you the best and the blessed you are with us today sharing learning. Yeah, thanks. Thank I, I, you. Guys, I really appreciate this. Um, this is a really good um, live stream. <laughs> yeah, it is interesting stuff. Uh, do you have any experiences with Kratom or Kava? I've done cra- actually with Adam, Psych Substance, a few years ago in, in, in Canada. It was pretty that. good. That's the only time I've, ha- I've had it. He gave me some Kava, but it was like fermented. He didn't know. Remember? Oh, when it, yeah, when like, it, yeah. He didn't realize he gave it to you, and then he sniffed it later, and he's like, "I oh, think this is bad." Yeah, I was like, "Oh, you bastard!" <laughs> yeah, that was funny. So, what would you define as DMT entities in terms of your belief? See, the thing, I don't know what DMT entities are per se, but what I do know is that they have a higher advantage than what I do, and you have to understand that there is deception. In reality, like you can ju- even just look in, in nature, like there's certain plants that kind of look Ooh, friendly and then you go and pff, blah, poison mm. you and you die. You know, like that phenomena exists in nature. And if you follow the as above, so below principles, of course, it's going to work that way in the spiritual realm. Yeah. And what I like about orthodoxy, they have a word for it. It's called prelist, which doesn't exist in the dictionary, but that basically means false spiritual experiences. And people don't question where their experiences are coming from. It doesn't mean that it's all like demonic or good or bad. Like, But my point is that you've got to question, what are you experiencing? Who is actually giving me this message? Can this be trusted? Mm. Should I just trust? Is my emotions getting manipulated? See, and this is, is this what, truth? This is what we were saying with like the ayahuasca trips mm. because you don't know. I had a moment where I felt like I thought I had a family member come in and hold me. Ooh. But then after it was like, wait a second. <sighs> was it actually, was, or was it someone deceiving me? Yeah. And thinking, making me feel like it was someone, family, to hold me. And ever since I started questioning these things, all my future psychedelic trips, spirits didn't come to me anymore. Because I, it's like, huh, interesting. So once I started to be a little bit more skeptical and started to question these intentions, they, they came to me way less. Mm, mm. And. You know, I don't, I don't know what to do about that. You know, because so because <laughs> the family member I thought, I remember the family member I thought it was. I've actually, I have actually seen before. I saw her outside, standing on the roof, or um, outside my brother's window at my old house, and I remember thinking it was really weird. And I saw her, I saw her standing there because I thought it was my mum. And she was dressed in white. And she was just standing there. So if some, like, I don't know, having that presented to me in that way, but then to be in a trip where I don't actually see her, I still just feel her. I feel like, I don't know, something something fishy there. Well, it would be like, you know, from what, the way I think about it is like the way the spiritual entities communicate with us mm. would be like how we would communicate, let's say, with a two-dimensional world. I have like this God level power, God with a lowercase g, of course, (laughs) (laughs) where I can basically, I can see everything in a bird's eye view and these characters, they don't see what I see. And so I could just draw myself as like, oh, look, I'm an angel of light and I'm here to give you the truth. Mm. But then, but behind I have like these nefarious intentions and stuff like why, 
if there are evil people in this world deceiving people with less knowledge, why wouldn't that be the same case in the spiritual dimension, but on a whole different level? Yeah. Again, I'm not saying therefore it's all evil, but you could understand that it, it. It, evil can be can very easily hide in these in these dimensions. That's the point. It's very cold in this room, and people don't question. Remember, evil goes at. I know, like wh whatever you think of Alex Jones, not a hero there, but something that he said, which really resonated with me, he said that evil goes out of its way to bring you down, whereas good, real good will never fuck with your free will. It's not going to go out of its way to, hey, hey, come here. It's like you have to go to good, whereas evil tr actively tries to bring you down. So do what you want. Interesting. Very interesting note. So are psychedelics fake or bad? No. I, again, I don't, I don't have an answer for this. And I'm not even like, oh, I'm never taking psychedelics again. I, I might even do another one. I hope that I don't have like a horrible trip that really takes me out of it but i had really good trips my last ones they've been all very positive but no no i don't think psychedelics are bad no <laughs> yeah everyone's like, oh so you're saying that no i'm just saying you've got to question your experiences that's yeah. the point see people people hear that and they go oh so you're saying that psychedelics are evil then no I'm just saying that evil entities could easily hide in these because be you've got to think about the psychedelic realm. Like, be honest with yourself. Most people who go into this are like naive young people trying to kind of find their way and they're very suggestible. And psychedelics make you hyper-suggestible. That's what I mean. It's a tool that they can use. DMT entities can be met without taking externals. Interesting. You, you, you mean like through like kundalini yoga and deep breath meditation and stuff? Well, I like when she says, mm. Mm. <laughs> Apparently I do that a lot. <laughs> they mentioned it at work. They're like, you send yourself, I was like, mm. does free oh, Does free mm. will exist? Yes, of course it exists. Let me ask you a question. Is there anything in existence that exists where its opposite doesn't? In other words, could there be up without down, good without bad, light without dark, positive without negative, male without female? No. So why would that be the case with determinism? and free will how can only determinism exist and then it's opposite it's oh no it's just an illusion and then if you were to act as if there is no free will then what are we doing here even the people who don't believe in free will still act as if it's real something being an illusion if you have to act as it's real it doesn't make sense it completely falls apart mm -hmm. people just mm -hmm. don't understand mm -hmm. polarity they, it sounds smart Ooh, yeah Free will, like because li I listen to Sam Harris or something like that. No, free will is real. Isn't this reality mostly an illusion? Well, what do you mean by illusion? Not real. It, look, look <laughs> isn't it funny? Look, isn't this reality mostly an illusion? And what's in the word reality? Real. That's what reality is. Reality is real. Anyways. Hey, man, I'm so glad to see you're engaged. Thank you. Thank you. Also glad. Ooh, Very glad. Thank you. I'm going to put, put a ring on my finger. <laughs> Back to him. Physicality is unreal. Do you guys believe in crystals? I believe that they work. I don't use them, though. Thoughts on astral projection. I think it's a dangerous idea to leave your body because once, you, once your soul leaves your body, it's an empty vessel, and who knows what can slip in. And I've heard a horrible, horrible, the most nightmarish antidotes of people going into astral projection, especially long term. And these are a lot of these people start off with, oh, I've met these light beings. And, oh, it's all love and light and light and light. And then next, next minute they're getting gang raped by demons. Whoa. That's happened. <laughs> For real. Yeah. That's, that's crazy. Lucid dreaming, on the other hand, you're still in the container of your own mind, whereas astral projection is like you're consciously leaving your body this world has both dark and light illusion and reality exactly exactly it's n it's not going to always be one or the other <laughs> nah it's safe all right let's listen to gawillamon <laughs> based on what so you've studied meta-analysis and seen the long-term effects of astral projection and everyone that gets into it it's all good there's never it never goes sour ever I don't think so. It's easy to protect your aura during astral projection. But based on what? 
your own belief because you want it to believe it, you want to believe it's true. I don't know. Fear is not because I am eternal. Fear is created by the self. I have fought malevolent constructs on six grams of mushrooms, so I know all about hell and other domain. Yeah, me too, dude. I've been in the most horrific hellish realms on on like ayahuasca and all this stuff. And there was the first part of my journey. For sure, I freaked out. That's why you guys have seen that that psychosis video. But I've also went back into those realms and was able to to handle a lot better. Still, I had like fear, and it wasn't like smooth sailing. But no, I've, I've been through these hellish dimensions and gone out the other side. But it doesn't mean that we we got to keep going there, you know. At least for me, anyway. The soul is always focused on the light and doesn't see duality. Have you ever met Jay Dyer? I like him. Not in real life, only the... Do you believe astral projection is actually your soul leaving your body or it's all psychological? Both. <laughs> is that an and or? Can it be both? I don't know. I well, because the thing I'm is... I'm deeply that, thinking about that, but it, I'm, it's hard I'm to not because sure. Because the soul isn't like this tangible, physical thing where you can put under a microscope. So really, you could just argue that the soul doesn't even exist and it's all mm. psychological. Because I think it could be the conscious, the, our consciousness as well, just escaping yeah. the body. If you could have waited to take psychedelics, what age would you have taken them? I would have waited much later, at least 25, 26, even 30, really. Yeah, I think the, the longer you wait, the more... My beneficial first, they can be how old was i in my first trip 23 do you, do you think the dmt spirits slash entities answer to god or are they god no if anything they're much closer to demons and yeah. i remember the <laughs> word, remember the word demon daemon means spirit so just remember that because we've got to look at the original because the meanings of the words get twisted so much especially these days to compared to their original meaning so then the patterns get disrupted and people get more confused because we're changing the meanings of words and we're becoming more divided and we're fighting. Reality is like deconstructing, falling apart because there's all these deception and lies and division that's getting thrown in the mix. And on a fundamental level, it starts with changing the meanings of words. So when people think of like spirits or demons, I don't know. I'm just talking shit at this point. Probably this whole stream. <laughs> what is this? Well, the I think the etymology of devil anyway, I think it means to, yeah, to take apart. Yeah, I think so. Let me get back to you on that. Not in, on this live stream, but let me. There's there's a lot of comments here which I'm like, okay, i gotta I got to meditate on that a little <laughs> bit more. And, you know what I mean? Like there's a lot to learn. Yeah. Because people are asking me questions as, as if I'm like some sort of expert. And I, I don't know. I'm just learning. No, but they're very good questions. They are they, very good questions. They, they need to be answered. They force us to have a look 100%. and be like, you know what? I'll go back to you. That's why actually it would be good to do a live stream with like Jay Dyer or someone who's actually an expert on this stuff, you know? I'm sorry. I'm not so knowledgeable on this no. stuff. You're cool, but yeah. <laughs> I know nothing, Jon Snow. Uh, I had a mushroom experience that showed me all parts of ego and then ripped them out of me. Would you recommend going back into another experience if the last one left you lost? No, I wouldn't recommend it. Oh, that depends. If it leaves though. you more, ah, oh, because sometimes it could be like completing you, the yeah, circle. Yeah, you might have left a door open that you might need to close. But through because psychedelics again? Did you, I didn't. No. Remember my last, the one I had like a few you years did. ago. You did. What do you mean with your ayahuasca trip? Oh, but that was years later. Because my last aboga trip, I didn't touch psychedelics oh, for years. What are you talking about? The last ayahuasca trip. Oh, night two, that one. Yeah, they yeah, didn't, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, they didn't, after your night two, they didn't say, no, don't take any more um, for the rest of it. They just gave you increments so that you were able to close that door because otherwise you left that door completely open. <laughs> These questions have answers you just have to remember. <laughs> I can't unsee Tom being Jon Snow now. <laughs> if you see photos of Jon Snow when he was younger, they actually kind of look alike. Guys, I know it might be cool and like well to talk about spirits and stuff, but try to find a bridge to connect your passive life to the big ideas. Okay. That's yeah, that's why I don't mess with spirits because I, I I find it hard to bridge it towards the practical everyday life. You know what I mean? And then who would who do I believe? 
I'd ra- I, I would believe a human over a spirit because at least I know humans because I am a human. Mm. So you can tell, and especially as you go through life and you get fucked over, you can see the signs of like, okay, this person's full of shit, or you can judge, okay, they're saying this, but how is their fruits of their life? Is there mm. every day? Are they actually happy? Is it? If, are things working for them? Or are they just yeah. saying this shit? But really, in reality, they're just as lost as the next person. Yeah. So at least with humans, I can I have a much better judgment of whether this person is full of shit or tell them the truth, and then I can test their truth. Whereas with spirit, it's all ethereal. It's all like I, I don't know. <laughs> I just don't know. <laughs> <sighs> What's your opinion on Reiki? I, I hear it works. I, I personally, I've I, I don't. About it. I've done it before, a few times, but yeah, no, I don't. I don't mess with any of that stuff anymore. As a couple, what is your dream adventure if you had all the resources possible baby say it again dream adventure as a couple what is your dream adventure if you had all the resources i think we'd like to travel go to mexico Mexico. japan japan yeah that'll be like the end game yeah kind of kind of vibe this is the end game now check it yeah honestly we would just be traveling and Even experience Australia. life. Kind yeah. of what we're living. We're kind of living a, a dream in this, in a lot of ways. Yeah. I mean, there's like, yeah. I, I mean, yeah. It'd be nice. I'm like, oh, you know, I'd love to go to Japan, but it's not going to make me like any happier than what I am now. So no, we're pretty, we're, we're good. pretty happy. We're pretty good. I think I'm we're genuinely, living yeah. our life the way I, we want. I feel like I'm genuinely happy and at peace. I'm glad. For a while. I hope I've contributed to that. <laughs> Is salvia the health model? I've never done salvia, but from what I hear, man, that. It seems to consistently take you to these really weird places. So I don't know. I can't confirm whether I can't say, yes, it's a hell portal. I don't know. Sashimi and sake. But I would never do salvia. That's for damn sure. Ever. I have family in Japan and still haven't visited. I've got to get on that. Yeah. Family is important. Family is really important. And it's something you don't realize until it's too late, which is so sad. You got to take advantage because... That's your family. They're they're the ones that are supposed to be there forever. Don't get me wrong. There's parts of my family that I absolutely do not talk to, but that's a different matter. Um, My immediate family is, yeah, I love my family. (laughs) Fight me, third eye. No fighting here, guys. Come on. I mean, maybe in the philosophy you have a formal debate. (laughs) That'd be fun. I've always wanted to have debates. I'm I'm trying to die. (laughs) I'm sorry. (laughs) It's not COVID, I swear. Jeez. Whoa. No, but I've always wanted to debate Leo Gura, and I've reached out to him a few times. Mm. But he doesn't do debates. Interesting, that's, that. Wait. Yeah, interesting. Leo De Gura is the one that did the video the where he, he was God. God and somebody came and delivered something. He's like, dude, I'm in the middle of a video. Yeah, it's like, it's oh, like, very loving of you. Yeah. Uh, anyways, I'm God. I'm, a, I'm, I'm omniscient. It's like, Are you it's serious? Like, dude, you're tripping on acid. I understand the feeling. I understand it's very profound, but put the camera away. <laughs> you know, you're not God, dude. It's so funny. Oh God! I'm oh, sorry. I used used. Because I, no, I remember getting into a thing on on the comments with Leo, right? Mm-hmm. And I I was explaining how in Hermeticism I re- explained the prince the principle of duality and the all, and how it's like the paradox <laughs> of like like you're not God, but God's within you. Blah 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 blah. And we went back and forth, back and forth, and then his end was go do psychedelics and then come back to me, and it's like. Mate, I've been making videos about psychedelics before you even had your first trip. It's just funny how, you know, if you're talking about logic and reasoning and then or he resorted to go take psychedelics. So basically he said, come back until you agree with me. And I've had psychedelic trips oh, since then. Yo. I had the 5-MEO trip. I understand. No, doesn't mean you're God. What do you disagree on Leo Guru with? Uh, relativism and that we're all God. Devil is projection of our own ego. It seems real, but it's not real. It's like, yeah, maybe. But the thing is, you call the devil is a projection of our own ego, but maybe our ego is just recognizing the pattern of the archetypical devil. Maybe the devil is actually a reality, more real than any human, because the devil is going to be, has been around long before you were born and will be around long after you're gone. So in a sense, these archetypes are actually realer than, than you and me who live and die. These things, these are principalities. So no, I wouldn't. I get what you're saying, though. I do, I do get what you're saying, but yeah. 
are we not all of God though? An aspect of yes. Uh, okay, I've already gone through this, so if you're probably <laughs> late to the party. Just rewatch this stream, and I have a video actually. If you really want to go down to it, I've disproved all this stuff. If you believe in logic and reason, and not purely just on, I interpret it based on my emotions, emotional appeals, basically. Search "You Are Not God" documentary. Boom. It's a and good one. It, nothing to do with Christianity either. So yeah, no. <laughs> this is before really I even. Movie. This was even before I got, got into, into it. Yeah. yeah, I disproved this nonsense, absurd theory before even getting into this. Now I, I will, I'll be much better at it. But yeah, um, and just challenging what you're saying. Yeah, of course, love I that. love challenge. Love it. Love yes. it because it really tightens your arguments. You know what I mean? And then if someone comes up with something that you know completely dissolves everything all my logic and reasoning, then it's like, okay, back to the drawing board. That's why I've taken kind of a very long break of making videos about spirituality and philosophy because I really want to make sure this time that I know what the fuck I'm talking about. And it takes years. It takes many years to to get to that point. Then what happens after you die? I haven't died, mate. Can't confirm. I did, but I kept coming back. <laughs> I thought I've died before. I kept kept getting ripped apart into pieces and then spat back out as whole. And I'm like, oh, okay. And then sucked back in again and torn apart again and then spat back out. Yeah. That was interesting. Leo is very misunderstood. You should really check out his more recent stuff. He only preaches love. He's not saying you as a human is God. He's saying all of existence is God. Yeah, I, I understand. But that's what I'm saying is wrong and that kind of logic leads to catastrophe because you're equating the universe to God itself and not, you know what I mean? Like there's a difference between the creator. It's like, for example, if I drew a cartoon character on my hand, would you say that this cartoon is me literally or that it's a creation of myself, it's an ex extension of myself? Because I could rub out this cartoon character and I would still be, right? Because God is supposed to be this substantial reality, this this consistent reality that is the grounding of all existence, whereas existence itself, the universe, it lives and it dies. It has a cycle. It's, it's, what do you call it? Permanent? No, impermanent. Impermanence. It's always yep. changing. It's transient. By definition, it can't be God. It has no beginning or end. That's the other. I'll have to look into that. Anyways, I reckon that's a good time to end. Two hours? I can't believe it's been two hours. Yeah, no, this that goes quick. So um, yeah, we're thinking. What do you guys think about doing these live streams like every week? Semen retention. God equals consciousness equals guru. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's a good one. Okay. There's a lot of deep stuff here. <laughs> so there's a lot to, you know, let me marinate over some of this stuff. And I'll get back we, next week. Already. We are considering doing um, weekly live streams. Yeah, so these are fun. Be cool to hang. You know, it's cool to hang out with you guys and talk about this stuff. And yeah, awesome. Anyways, guys, have a good one. I hope you guys are well, especially during these times. And much love to you and your families. And much love. We'll catch you on the next video. Like and subscribe. Bye, guys. Right. Thanks for having us. Catch you guys. Love all you. Bye-bye.